Hi guys. It is another exciting Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a snowy Saturday night, December 10th, 2022, I believe. So, uh, been over here at Netflix watching for the second time to pick up what I missed. I'm watching this, uh, documentary on, on Netflix, which I highly recommend, called The Ivory Game. The Ivory Game, which is connecting the dots between dead elephants in China and clueless morons and just more reasons that humans need to go extinct. You know, one of those documentaries, and uh, if you have Netflix and you have any confusion about why humans need to leave the planet. Just the Ivory Game. Uh, the Ivory Game uh, is a very good reason why planet Earth needs to be a human exclusion zone. But anyway, as I've been watching this, I've been thinking I just need to do a little bit of amplification and clarification of a little mini rant I went on towards the end of my ecological meltdown roundup rant last night. You know, on Friday when I do, when I, you know, cover the Manga Bay weekly newsletter, which consistently is the single least viewed video I do every week. I think the Manga Bay roundup that I do every Friday is the single most important chronicle of the collapse for anybody trying to understand. Uh, where I usually cover maybe 12, 15, maybe around a dozen stories from that. And so anyway, towards the end of that uh, video last night, which I understand if if 10 people on the planet made it that far into the video, I'd be shocked. And then I finished that video and went over there to uh, Environmental Coffee House, you know, to watch Sandy Shellis and Jennifer Hines do their show on COP15, this uh, unadulterated horseshit. Um, little dog and pony show going on up there in, uh, I guess it's Montreal. And now, now I love Jennifer Hines and, and Sandy both, but it was clear that Sandy and especially Jennifer had never heard of COP15. They never heard of it. They didn't, they didn't know what the hell it was. Uh, I've been talking or trying not to talk about COP15 for I don't know how many weeks on this channel. And uh, it, I, 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 I mean, it's so clear that, that nobody has ever heard of what I consider to be a much more important topic than all of these unadulterated horseshit uh, climate cops. Uh, so, I guess what? There's been 27 climate cops, but we're now this year finally up to the 15th cop. And so I, I'm just going to try to explain it to you for people who missed my little rant. Yes last night, which I realized is the entire planet minus maybe 10 people, I just want to try to explain to you what this dog and pony show is, since you're not going to find any mention of it in the mainstream media. Just what it is, is everything you need to know about COP15, and when COP16 comes around in a couple of years, it, this is everything you need to know about these biodiversity uh, 
talks that the United Nations does to uh, talk about how the planet is going to save biodiversity, you know, save all of our fellow earthlings. Okay, the, the main just general overview of these, they are unadulterated horse shit. Okay, unadulterated horse shit. These UN uh, bio, you know, biodiversity uh, conferences are 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 an absolute. They're they're beyond pointless. What they are is they are just a slap in the face to Mother Earth. They are an insult to this planet. That's what they are. They are if, if this the, you know those climate uh, protesters throwing shit on those works of art. Well, that's what this is. Is except there's no glass protecting the work of art known as this planet. It, 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 it is a flat out in your face just it, it, it is just it, it's so beyond dark black irony that the United Nations, you know, quite possibly the single biggest bunch of planet eaters ever convened in the history of humanity coming together, acting like they give a flying F about saving, uh, the, the saving our fellow earthlings. Every single one of these cops going back to 1992 has been an abject failure. Every single one of their little completely toothless, spineless, ballless little recommendations, policy decisions, biodiversity goals, whatever words you want to use for it, has been a total failure. Going all the way back to cop number one in 1992. The, the, this, uh, the, the, this, this blah, blah, blah. Uh, it, it, it's just, it, it, it's... I, I, I mean, I don't know the word to describe the disingenuous crocodile tears that uh, that anybody's showing up now. And, and I and I do want to let me make one amplification and clarification. I'm not talking about the actual conservation biologist you know, going to this thing, just screaming, you know, pissing into the wind. I am not knocking the scientists. The science is there. Okay, I'm not talking trash about the biologists, ecologists, oceanographers, uh, all of that gang. Uh, they're doing what they can, but what they can do is nothing. This is, it, it is, it is greenwashing. It, it, it's not, it, it, again, it's beyond greenwashing. It's, it's, it's brownwashing. It's kind of like some diarrhea brown colored, just, I, 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 I mean, the, the layers of bullshit. I, I mean, it's just like, I, I'm trying to see some humor in this. It's, uh, you know, the reason that Michael Rupert killed himself uh, is because he lost his sense of humor about 
uh, what's going on on this planet and, and, and these clueless morons' response to it. Uh, it, it, there, it it's it, it's beyond the what my buddy he calls it the mock uh, that he approaches looking at this at, at this unadulterated horseshit, you know, from one end of the spectrum to the other that he tries to appreciate what he calls the mock, <clears throat> the, the ironic, uh, j just the, the, the black, twisted, sick irony of these lying sacks of shit. These evil scumbag lying sacks of shit acting like they give a fuck about this planet. Sorry for my language. They don't. They don't care. They don't care. And and then to <laughs> I'm a little bit unclear about why this thing is even taking place in in, in, uh, in, in Canada. I guess it was originally scheduled to take place in China a couple of years ago, but then the corona panic came up and, and everybody in, in the entire world got put on hold because 0.2% of humans uh, were dying of corona panic. Uh, so I guess, uh, I, 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 I guess the single biggest tragedy unfolding on on this planet in the last 66 million years has just put on the back burner and, and, and all of these people so goddamn scared they were going to get some... Uh, I I anyway, I'm not going to get off on a corona panic thing. So anyway, it took two years uh, to, climb out of, to climb out of that sewer. And uh, so somehow this thing ended up in uh, in Canada, but China is still quote somehow China is is leading COP fifteen or something that China you know orchestrating a a conference on uh, on saving biodiversity you know the, the the only thing i can it, it would be like sancho panza you know uh leading a conference on saving chipmunks did the chip hear what is that a rat it would be yeah China saving the planet. If, if anybody uh, does not understand how much uh, of a shit China gives about our fellow Earthlings, just go watch the Ivory Game. Go listen to my interview. I'm pretty sure it was with Thomas Lovejoy, uh, who uh, died last year. Um, I'm pretty sure we lost Thomas last year. But anyway, uh, I am so glad I got to interview Thomas Lovejoy. He used to write a lot for Manga Bay. And, uh, you know, he was a, mainly, a, he was a conservation biologist, ecologist kind of guy. Spent most of his time in the last part of his life down in the Amazon rainforest looking at that. And what he was telling me in that interview and I, I, I do not argue with the man. He was talking about this Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. See, Sancho is already yawning. You just mentioned the words Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Sancho, Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. What do you think about the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative? Is there a rat? 
This is what most people who hear about the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. It's the same thing, uh, the look on their face, the glazed look in their eyes, if you mention the UN biodiversity talks. The Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, for anyone who missed my interview with Thomas Lovejoy, is, according to Thomas, and I do not disagree with this man, is... Are we boring you? The Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is the single biggest immediate threat to life on planet Earth. If anybody asks you, what is the biggest immediate threat to life on, well, obviously humans, uh, you know, but that, uh, obviously humans are, are, are they, but uh, to the extent that humans living in China came up with a Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, what is it about humanity that is the single biggest threat to life on this planet? It is the Chinese <laughs> Belt and Road Initiative is the single biggest right now unfolding threat to life on this planet. It leaves climate change in the dust. Now, eventually, climate change is going to catch up with the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. As the but that where we're talking decades down the line, right now, this minute, it is China. Make no mistake about this. With no help from the rest of this planet, if every single human being on this planet went to bed tonight, fell asleep, and just never woke up, if the entire planet outside of China were to die tonight, China, with no help from the rest of this planet, will single-handedly destroy life on planet Earth. This is a fact for China, for China to be leading a, a, a one of these, one of these dog and pony shows, uh, you know, being held up is some kind of poster child. What kind of bullshit? What is it? Their ecological civilization. Their ecological civilization. My ass. Go on to the ivory game and, 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 and uh, disabuse yourself of any notion of the Chinese ecological civilization. I'm not saying every single human being in the country of China is guilty. I mean, they, you know, they, they feature one of these uh, Chinese people who wants to uh, atone for his sins of being born in China. Uh, they're, they're, China is the most anti-ecological civilization in the history of humanity. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the statistic that in the 21st century, in the, in the last 22 years, China, China has poured more concrete than the United States has poured since 1776. China is a the single biggest threat to the biodiversity on this planet of any country in the history of the planet. Now it can be argued correctly that you can pin this all on Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger back in 1978. If you want to play the blame game, who, whose fault is it that China is the biggest threat to the planet? It is Richard Outhouse Nixon and Henry Kissinger's fault. But 
whoever's fault it is, it is what it is. That uh, anybody from China uh, showing up in Canada uh, to lead a United Nations uh, biodiversity talk needs to be thrown in prison for crimes against the planet for the rest of their life. The this COP15 horseshit, which I'm fairly happy to see that the mainstream media is virtually ignoring. What were uh, Sandy and Jennifer talking about last night? It, or, or any it, it is one head of state uh, on this planet showing up to this bullshit? Did, did Justin Trudeau did he walk across the street to uh, go to this thing? Nobody gives a shit about the single biggest tragedy on this planet in the past 66 million years. It is, it, it holds no interest. I found one article uh, on this dog and pony show in the mainstream media today about 80% of the way down the Rolodex of stories. It was from the BBC. They had to go to, you know, to Zombie Island and, uh, you know, talking about how the the how the planet is doomed uh how humans are you know is causing the sixth mass extinction how many comments on a planet of eight billion people left a comment on that story well it wasn't zero shockingly it was three and the one story the one story uh, about this bullshit dog and pony show, three people out of eight billion, seven billion, nine hundred ninety-nine million, nine hundred ninety-nine thousand, nine hundred ninety-seven people do not give a shit. They don't give a shit. You know, uh, and, 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 and it, my guess is, is that this insulting, and it, it's all, it, I mean, it, 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 this insult against this planet uh, and, and, and this bullshit uh, dog and pony show will actually end up doing more harm to our fellow earthlings uh, than, than we're doing without them, uh, with, without these talks, because there will be s uh, just a few little clueless morons actually believing for one minute that anybody in the United Nations gives a damn about the single biggest a uh, crisis on this planet. This is why I am an anti-humanist. Humans need to go. Oh, and then the other thing, yeah, what, what, what was the one I was laughing about in Manga Bay and, and, and Sandy and Jennifer were laughing about? I guess so is it the theme or is it touted as the purpose? The purpose of these talks is to get humanity to, what is it? To be living in balance with nature by the year 2050. By the year 2050, uh, the UN, the United Nations, the single biggest bunch of out-of-balance planet eaters ever gathered under one roof is going to convince, then I guess, nine billion people 
to live in harmony with nature. There has never been a human being on this planet ever born, ever born living in harmony with nature. Can you say Kiwana Scotsy? Yeah, we're going to be living in balance with nature in 28 more years. 300,000 years. We've been working on it. 28 more years, the United Nations is going to have humans in balance with nature. There is one way and one way only for humans to live in balance and harmony with nature, and that is for humans to go extinct. The day the last human being on this planet winks out, humans will be living in balance and harmony with nature, and this planet can start the healing process, which will probably take about 10 million years. We need to go, and that is all you need to know about the UN COP 15, 16, 22, and however many more of these things they're going to trot out before humans are thankfully extinct. And with that, I'm going to wrap this up. Freshen my drink and head back to the Ivory game on Netflix and uh, because maybe there's something I don't understand about what's going on on this planet. Maybe I just don't get something. So I'm going to go watch the second half of the Ivory game. Bye, guys.